Hi, welcome. I'm Bob Martin of startbuke.com. Today we're going to talk about a very, very important recovery topic called HALT. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. We've all heard about it. Anybody that's in recovery, especially early recovery, has been affected by it. And it's one of the most baffling emotional areas of recovery that we don't know what to do about as recovering persons. And we struggle with it. And it often leads to relapse. Here with me today is Jim Leonard. Jim Leonard works with us. Jim Leonard is one of the most knowledgeable people about the recovery movement, about addiction, and about how to stay sober. Jim, tell me about hungry, angry, lonely, tired, and why does it baffle and confuse all of the recovering folks, especially those in early recovery? The paradox is that I'm going to try and do it in a couple of minutes, which takes a lifetime to understand. Ah. Okay. Uh, in my own personal experience, um, I have found the acronym HALT okay, uh, sometimes very confusing. But what I can tell you right now is that those of you who are with family members uh, who are suffering through some form of addiction, particularly we're talking mostly now here about the opioid crisis, you may begin to wonder, what's that got to do with anything about the opiate thing? And unfortunately what Bob said is very, very true. The paradox is it has a lot to do with the individual's process of recovery. But it requires an incredible amount of being open-minded to this concept which we in the industry of helping people, particularly with addiction, um, we understand it to some degree, but communicating to that that comes to you or to Dr. Rand for help uh, takes a lot of patience. I've heard that we can mess up a one-car funeral procession by complicating things. When I'm hungry, I should just eat. Right. When I'm angry, I should just take a time out. When I'm lonely, I should go to a meeting so I'm around other sober people. Right. And when I'm tired, I should just take a nap or go to sleep. How do we confuse these simple human needs? Well, you brought up a very interesting point. For example, and, I, and I'm, when I talk, I'm talking about my own experience. You know? I know that when I was at that anger stage where my emotional response to the anger was some form of retaliation, uh, you know, uh, my favorite thing is I'm going to get even first and then I'll feel better using that. The idea of trying to shift from that attitude of anger to a more positive sense like, oops, this is a signal that if I don't find a way to subdue or minimize this anger, okay, the history is you're going to relapse eventually. How do I prevent that? Ah, now that's where, uh, and let's just talk about the folks that are looking at this thing. The first thing that happens is in the prevention of it is, first of all, in Dr. Rad's medical approach to it, part of it, what goes on, is a counseling uh, services that Dr. Rad's office provides. Most people don't like to talk about negative emotions. One of the reasons they don't like talking about it, because most negative emotions were established long before they ever thought of trying to find some relief from that anger or wrath. What happens is they come to you for seek some help 
but they have a great deal of difficulty comprehending that the anger, which was a negative thing in their life, now can become a positive thing to alert them that anger has been part of their emotional and mental disease, if you wish, or mental structure, that they have to realize that they're going to get angry, but they need to turn around. And so one of the things that I know is practice it. Where? Come to you and say, look, I'm having a lot of anger and I don't want to know what the heck to do with it. And you say, okay. And then you have your own way of approaching it. There are many different ways to do it. The individual is going to be confused in the beginning, okay? Because they want instant relief from the anger. And instead of what we like to try to communicate, for example, pick the telephone up. One of my, one of my favorite things, Bob, I've been is this finger right here has saved my life or save my recovery, or save my not committing homicide, okay? Many times, because I pick the phone up, and I start doing this, because I call her. I call somebody like you and say, I don't know what the hell's going on, but I am not doing well. I'm mad as hell, and I'm about to throw my hands up and say to hell with all of it. So reaching out to another professional or sober person is the first step to getting help. Exactly. Exactly. And that is the part in early treatment okay, that we have to establish is that the individual is commonly used, we're back to this uh, acronym of HALT. The toughest place to practice that is when an individual like I and many others who struggle with the recovery in the process in the beginning go to a familiar place, and that is we isolate ourselves, even from our friends. Mm. Go ahead. So it's important in dealing with halt, hungry, angry, lonely, tired that we identify which one of these feelings is affecting us and fix that feeling. So we don't eat when we're lonely, we don't sleep when we're angry, we don't yell at someone when we're really tired, that we deal with hungry when we're hungry, angry when we're angry, and lonely when we're lonely, and tired when we're tired. You brought up a very crucial point right there. You see, when in this phase of halt, you actually experience all four of them. You don't have to identify. Like the commercial hangry. Yeah. I want a candy bar, I'm hangry. Okay, exactly. All you have to do is be able to identify any one of them as the primary thing at that moment. There's no such thing as right or wrong, ah, okay? okay? But it's all present. Most of the time when I've seen people go through it, including myself, I will guarantee you I haven't eaten properly. And let's face it, Bob, we in this country are lousy at mm -hmm. our diet, yeah. okay? Yeah. I'll bet you the folks who sit in the Washington Indian right now, I'll bet you half of them right now, who are not even addicted to a substance, okay? Don't eat properly. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay? Don't eat properly. And so the idea is, even this silly thing of eating, did I eat today? No. Then go get something right away and start chewing on it. Something good. Jim, this has been great. I hope that it's helped our patients. It's important that you reach out to someone either here at startbuke.com, someone in your sober peer support group, someone in your spiritual support group, or a trusted friend or family member. Thank you very much. I hope we've been able to help you today. Be blessed.